Hi guys, I agree with Ed here. Um, full screen. Let's uh, see what he says. Good afternoon. In this video, I want to deal with the issue of Romans ten thirteen through uh, Romans ten sixteen and yep. uh, actually seventeen. So logically, that's why these guys won't read Romans ten fourteen. Logically. Romans 10, 13 comes after Romans 10, 14, and 10, 15. Yep. So when you read that, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him and who, have not, who they have not, not believed? believed? Believing comes before the calling. Yep. That's why we read Romans 10, 14. And how, they sh how, sh and how shall they believe in him and whom they have not heard? And how, sh and sh and how shall they hear without a preacher? Yep. So you have this logical order. It's logical order of how to get to belief. And the calling comes after the belief. So this is now a logical order. How do, how do people get to believe? Yep. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, which is the definition of gospel. So there, 15 and 16 are showing you, they all come before Romans 10, 13. Yep. How then shall they call on him who have not believed? There's your faith. And then it talks about how you get to the point of faith. And then Romans 10, 13 comes behind that. For whosoever shall call upon, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that salvation there is not the only time salvation. The person's already believed he's been saved. Yep. So logically speaking, Romans 10, 14, 10, 15 logically come before Romans 10, 13. Romans yep. 10, 10 uh, 14 and 15 are telling how a person gets saved. And then... Romans 10, 13 is talking about a, a person, a saved person who can pray to the Lord for salvation from temple issues. As logically speaking, it has to be temple issues because they already believe. Yep. These guys are trying to put calling before faith when actually it's faith and then you call it. Yep. That's the logical order. That's why Brian Daniel won't read Romans 10, 14. It shows that his logical order is out of order. He's, he's not reading it correctly. Yep. The calling doesn't come before the faith. The faith comes before the calling. Yep. And then you go on to uh, Romans 16. But they all have not all, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. How do you obey the gospel? Not by calling, but by faith. Yep. For Elias, Elias say, say, saith, Lord, who and has And it's all about the blood. Faith. The blood of time and the Jesus. So there's faith, not calling, coming by healing and healing by the word of God. But I say, have they, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went unto, into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? So basically saying, Israel no excuse. First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I, I will anger you as Gentiles. But Isis is very bold and saith, I, found, I, have, I, have, I was found of them that sought me not, again, Gentiles, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Dead people, God is making manifest to people who aren't calling for him. He said he's going to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles aren't even calling for him. <laughs> so this idea, oh, it's called upon the name of the Lord. He's, he's saying that he, the, uh, uh, these are people, the, the Gentiles weren't even calling for God. When Paul showed up preaching the gospel, they responded to it and said, wow. We'll take that. <laughs> they know. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. They rejected the gospel. Gospel of grace of God, they thought they could make it by works. They thought keeping the law would keep them. That's the righteousness that Saul had. Paul, you know, Paul, Saul before he Paul. That was the righteousness. He was depending on the righteousness of the law and not the faith of Abraham. But I want to show you how how logical these guys, illogical these guys are and why they foul up everything. And that's why the sinner's prayer is so ridiculous. Because the act, yep. act yeah, the idea is you look at Anderson, he's got sinner's prayer, he's got the belief first. And then he's got I ask ask he asking God to save the person. And it shows you the person as soon as he believes he's saved. There's no doubt before he even got to the sinner's prayer he's saved. Because he's believing the scriptures as as they're being told to. 
So I believe a lot of people before they got saved before they even got near the sin's prayer was even given to them. But the only thing sin's, sin's prayer did is foul them up and thinking when they got saved, how they got saved. But I'll stop with this up. And uh, again, don't let these guys deceive you. See, Ed, um, I didn't know about to trust in the blood atonement of Jesus. Now I do. Now I do. And that's made a big d difference in, in my life. Read the, read the whole context. Romans 10, 14 and 10, 15 logically are before Romans 10, 13. The events of Romans 10, 14 and 15 are logically before the event of 10, 13. Because it says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? They can't. Of course they can't. And if you look at the Gentiles, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. They won't call him, the Gentiles won't call him for God. God said aside Israel. Why? Because Israel failed in their evangelism. They were supposed to go out and evangelize Gentiles. They didn't. So we'll stop with this up and uh, deal with some uh, other issues uh, in the future videos. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ed.